So, after our Legend of Illusion commentary we did a little while back, I suddenly had the urge to uh, record another game that was published by our good old friends from the former company that is known as Disney Interactive. Hey! Oh, I love those guys! Hey. Well, they, wait, if they published it, who... Rayman! Ubisoft? Yep. yep, Ubisoft made a Disney game, but not just any old Disney game. It stars our old lovable pal Donald Duck. Hmm. Meanwhile, at Gyro's place, we're reliving Donald's epic adventure as he's trying to turn on the TV with a busted remote. Oh, uh, hey, and hey, uh, G G what's his name? Guild or Gladstone? Glad Gladstone Gander. <laughs> so, is Gladstone supposed to be a duck or is he like a goose? I thought I think like, he's supposed I, to be a goose. I could see that. I could see that kind of like Mickey and Mortimer, Mouse and Rat. Yeah, that's true. What is Gyro supposed to be? A jar is supposed to be a chicken. Oh, uh oh. Oh, I didn't know that. I just thought it was a gear loose. But now, please watch this intrepid live report. The way it actually sounds funny saying it like that. Oh, hey, Daisy. By the way, I love how they treat every special report from Daisy Duck as a movie night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's Wait, because Mer Daisy's. Hmm? She's in Murloc's place? Yeah. Why do you. The guy from the DuckTales movie. Why is she here in the. Well, oh, she's reporting on his latest scheme. Daisy, <gasps> you know, you know how damsels end up in this situation. Yeah, I thought he died. I thought Murloc died at the end of DuckTales the movie. I look dead to you. Oh. And she's oh. and he snaps her neck. Daisy, no. The end. Yeah, I just realized. Hype and I joke about Daisy being killed. Oh. If anything, the cameraman's dead. Because we never hear from that person again. By the way, nice hairdo, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> and then his head just gently lands on his head. So, well, clearly, Don clearly Donald should be the one to save. Oh, oh Gyro has signed to take us to Murlocs. Wow, that was, that was easy. Well, he is an inventor. And, oh, so that's what the remote was for all this time. Actually, in hindsight, it makes you wonder, like, every time Donald was trying to turn the TV on, this this thing should have just, went, like, went on, went off, and all that stuff. <laughs> that'd be adorable. Yeah. That'd be funny, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. But yeah, uh, yeah, there's a problem. Um, Gladstone actually went in too early, and it threw the machine out of whack. Yeah, it needs more power. Don't you mean it threw it out of quack? Uh, going quack, <laughs> as you could say. That was cute, Jordy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Donald Duck Going Quackers for the Nintendo GameCube. Yes, we did actually do an old commentary of the N64 version of this a long time ago, but we decided to actually do a new commentary for a newer version of the game, one that I've actually Donald have Duck. a pretty strong attachment to. Not gonna lie. Really, mm -hmm. really. Mm. Uh, well, hey, well, well, first we got clearly we're gonna have a bunch of freaking tutorials. Not King Donald Dingo. It's the Donald Duck. <laughs> the right bird. But James, um okay, we're probably gonna have a lot of tutorial stuff. Crap, that's right, it's a Disney game. Ah uh, yes. Oh. oh, it's voice acted. Huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A good a good chunk of it is voice acted, so well actually I think all of this tech stuff is voice acted, so good. I it guess. is as far as I know. So our goal here is basically is that in we have to go to three separate locations in order to um act to uh, fully charge up the uh, teleporter and we have to we have to construct some weather vanes on the three highest points of the world. Wait, mm -hmm. what? The three highest peaks of the world just kind of just okay. All right then. Well, that should right. be a pro that should be a problem when you already have teleportation on your side. Exactly. And there's Donald Duck. Hey. <laughs> Aww. Is that was that That's actually, actually good was, that, was that in or did you edit that? No, uh, when you press the R button, Donald will say a random line. Aww. Makes sense. Me. So yeah, this but is our whole dedicated to talking. Well, it's not just to talking, but there's a there's a couple other stuff that's attached to that button as well. But anyway, here's our whole structure of the game. Each world is comprised of about three to four levels, and in each of them, Donald Duck has to go through what I like to call um, kids from a kid friendly Crash Bandicoot. Hmm. Whoa! Basically, gotta move. The music's definitely giving me Crash vibes. <laughs> What did you say, Jordy? I said this mu the music that was playing just now was definitely giving me crash vibes. <laughs> so yeah, those are your basic mechanics. Uh, learn them, learn them out, and get, haul your haul your duck butt a going. And um, so yeah, like I oh, um, what? 
There's a lot of talking in this. From For the first the... bit of it, yeah. Who, who voiced Gyro again? Yeah, it, it, it does get better about this. Uh, Gyro is voiced by Corey Burton, who also voiced a Merlin, Merlin back there. Who also yeah, voiced Gladstone. It... He... Everyone, it's it, welcome. Welcome to the freaking Corey Burton and Tony and Selma Hour. <laughs> Is that among uh, a few other actors? But we'll get to them later. Yeah. So anyway, here's our, our first location. Here is one Ducky Mountain. Um, and it serves as a nice, nice little training point for Donald's um, rather epic platforming skills. Like, I mean, okay, yeah, this is essentially is an easier you version of Crash Bandicoot, but it's also very. Yes. Oh, hello. And now it's time for product placement. With orange juice. Oh yeah, I should have told my mom to get orange juice earlier. I didn't. Crap. So so Donald so Donald Duck. Wait, so Donald Duck was orange juice? I, I thought that was. So oh, wait, so no, there actually, actually is such a thing as Donald Duck orange juice. In fact, they actually sell it at the Piggly Wiggly here. Oh yeah, they. Oh yeah, Donald Duck orange juice. I haven't seen that in a while. So that's their brand. Okay. So whenever you drink up orange juice, Donald becomes so hyped up that he can break break through certain terrain. And collect golden threads. What are golden threads? If, uh, uh, they're basically okay. okay. Golden threads are basically your method of collecting or of unlo unlocking new outfits for Donald. Okay. And see, they forgot to meet her, Michael. She's taking a phone call, but she'll be fine. Oops. She can help. Hopefully. There you go. That's fine. <laughs> well, at least she caught on. So, Any, so anyway, um, another cool thing is that when you're hyped up, your attacks are well, your attacks are some. The range of them are a little bigger, especially. Your, th your third hit of the combo, where Donald literally just shouts in your ear with his yeah. incessant Ow. whacking. Oh, dears. You, you could say he's going quackers. Ha. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, then, and so then in order to find... Uh, what was I going to say? So then in order to find um, the golden threads, it seems like it's a pretty good rule of thumb that wherever... Whenever you get an orange juice, a piece of destructible environment is about to come up that you can break through. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Though do be wary, though, that even though you're hyped up, you're not invincible. And if you... And there goes the flower again. Oh. Nice. But yeah, just be... Yeah, but yeah, do, do be careful, though, because you are still very vulnerable. And if you get hit, well, I won't say anything right now, because now, I think Gyro does a better job of explaining that than I do. But okay. yeah, like... Again, like, this is a very easy Crash Bandicoot-type game, but it's also one of those games that really Sorry does reward that, players... It's okay. Basically. It's anyway, like, this is one of those games I think really rewards fine play. Like, it, like sure, you can just play it at, at your leisure and all that stuff, and all is fine and good, but if you, like, pull off a whole bunch of crazy skills that only one like Donald Duck can perform, it's honestly a ton of fun. Like, also, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that was some pretty uh, fancy uh, finessing uh, bouncing you're doing back there. Yeah, not even, it's the kind of fl fancy f uh, flipper work that would make Crash jealous. Aww. <sighs> Which is funny saying that, considering um, as of today, the um, Insane Trilogy just got of all, all of its uh, multi-platform releases. Nice. Yay. And I can't wait to get it. <laughs> I know you can't no, wait to get, get it, honey. Pet, pet. You gotta do it. You got those commissions to work on to get to it. Yeah. Well, the, the well, uh, I can't really because the commissions are kind of being used to help out another thing, but I won't dwell on that here. Partly oh, because sorry. I don't think right, the viewers right. would care. Oh, sorry, my bad. I actually forgot. Oh, oh, oh hey, hey. No. the nephews. Wait, we're on so, TV. So basically, they've been watching. Basically, they've been watching us this entire time, and um, now they're about to explain to us uh, the special moves mechanic. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is exclusive to the GameCube version. GameCube and PS2, PS2 versions, yes. Sheesh, between this and the intro to PK, I have the feeling that Huey, Dewey, and Louie just are watching us constantly. Every move, just watching. <laughs> Every night in my dreams. I dream. What? Any hooser, so then, um, so, uh, you guys just mentioned the GameCube and PS2 versions. What other versions were there? Oh, there's a lot of versions of Donald Duck Gone Quackers that were released somewhere around the same time, but not quite. Like, there's an N64 version, a PS1 version, a Dreamcast version, a Game Boy co Color version, a Game Boy Advance version, a GameCube version, and a PS2 version. Okay. Now, the funny thing is, is that, um, I mean, depending on the system you're playing on, uh, like, a lot of them are very different from each other. Like, they almost don't always feel like the same game. Like... The N64, I, I assume that the PS1 and uh, Dreamcast versions are relatively the same. Uh, the Dreamcast, uh, N64 version has a few of its own changes. 
But then you got the GameCube and PS2 versions, which are practically nothing like it. Yeah, like, even the level design's different. Yeah, it, it's all the more evident for those that actually were, well, they've watched us for long enough to actually see our really dated N64 commentary when it was just me, Hype, and Heather. Aww. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a shame because, you know, bless Heather's heart and I still miss her, but James was right. She was just kind of... And I'm, not, and I'm not saying this to insult you, sis, but she was kind of taking on the role that you were doing where she was spending more time really observing anything rather than d d talking about it. Whoa, James, Which what happened there? Uh, okay, let's just say that, I mean, I had to right, record this game on the Dolphin. I yeah, I run, ran this on Dolphin, and unfortunately, there, Dolphin doesn't always like this game. Like, it doesn't do, yeah. do so to the point where everything's just glitching out, but in this case, it just stutters and slows down. Dolphin is more of a goofy fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Which is kind of sad, because Goofy, I don't think, ever had any games on the GameCube to himself. But, um... Yeah. Anyway, um... It's all, this is only at... The problems are only at its worst in, like, a few sections of Ducky Mountain, and especially the first level of Duck Park. Oh, dear. So, thankfully, I made, made sure to circumvent that, because, honestly, with how bad it got there, I don't want to leave you guys with nothing nothing but a bunch of uh, staticky duck screams like this. Yeah. Appreciate it. Also, I feel like I recognize that Bumblebee from things like uh, Melody Times the Bee thing. Oh, yeah, that, that's a Bumblebee that's been in a lot of Disney stuff. In fact, I think he even appeared in one of the Mickey shorts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, was fun. that was fun. But, yeah, no, like, Donald Duck Go and Quackers, like, if it's not immediately obvious, takes a lot of its inspiration from the Carl's Bank series of Donald Duck comics, and they used it to relatively good effect here. And it's actually kind of... And it's actually kind of funny, because in the original <laughs> releases for, like, the PS1 and the... For, like, the original releases of the PS1 and the Nintendo 64, it was actually released um, right before, right as he passed away. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's you know, it's one thing when you're bopping on an enemy cartoonishly. It's another thing when it just cuts... When it just shows Donald just sucker-punching Flower in the side of the head to destroy him. <laughs> well, hey, Donald will go to any lengths to save his girlfriend, question mark? Yeah. Girlfriend? Question It's about as ambiguous as Mickey and Minnie's relationship. <laughs> well, no, they're cl they're clearly they're clear. Oh no, no, they're clearly they're clearly boyfriend and girlfriend. But Donald and Daisy, well, you can argue that they're probably the more realistic inter interpretation of a of a couple gone awry. Yeah. yeah. So I guess it also depends on this on the context. I was about to say, speaking of realistic, Logan, would you mind making the joke that you did with Huge? Hugh Hugh oh, never mind, they're gone. No, no, next time, next time they're on. Next time they uh, show up, I'll talk about because it's um, it's just you know like I don't mind what the I, I mean of course I will always hold a nostalgic place in my heart for the original triplets and how they sounded and everything. But I, I will oh, and actually, actually, Logan, before we get to that, um, Donald Duck going Quackers um, also segment meant some of its levels in a way. Sometimes you usually go for a crash centric three D platformer. Other times you have a straight up two D platformer, and well, that's pretty much how it goes for most of it. And one other game that we'll show off later. Anyway. Okay. No, no, that was it. Just, just saying that I, I do like what the Ducktales, the new reboot of Ducktales, has try, has been trying to do, for, uh, for, for the series. You know. Oh yeah, oh, like yeah. they, I mean, it's appreciated that they try to give distinct personalities to the, to the uh, nephews, and especially Webby. <laughs> oh yeah, Webby. You can't, you can't say like that Webby. Webby's easily. You can't say Webby isn't one of the best things about the reboot, just for a fucking insane she is. Well, they, well, then they just made her likeable. So well, I'm sorry. Like Webby insane, was, I'm saying. Say. I'll say. I'm sorry. Webby was my least favorite part of the original movie. You mean the series? In general. I never. I, honestly, okay. I never watched a lot of the original series. I only watched the movie. Huh. That's hmm. fair. I never. I never owned any like media thing about the original. Du I Duck would say Tales. it's kind of. I would say for me, it's kind. Of, she kind of runs the same gambit as Huey, Dewey, and Louie do. Is that she's relatively harmless, but you're right that the newer show does a better job of giving her a more noticeable personality. It's kind of fucked up that one of one of the visual jokes they had in the in, in the uh, pilot was literally a quack, a quacky patch tall just pinned to the uh, of the original design thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Nope. No more. <sighs> Sad, but in a way, it was. In a way, I do prefer how they're handling Webby. Here. Sad, yet effective. even better considering it, 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 she's voiced by voiced by um, Sadie from Steven Universe. Slash, yes. Yeah, oh, 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 yoga special move, yoga. 
Yep, so now we got our special moves. As the nephew said earlier, these make you invincible. And you can actually learn a bunch of these as you go through the go through the, the entirety of the game. But nice. that does come with probably what my one my one critique oh. with this game in, in that you get a lot of special moves, but regardless of the different button combinations and the animations and stuff, they all do the exact same thing. They just make you invincible and um, give yeah. you more bang for your bang for your gears. Also, as James just pointed, showed off there very helpfully, it does pay to time out when you use them in the level to your best benefit to try and get as many of the gears as possible, not just the last three. Yeah. Right, it's true. But, so, actually, but, so, so, so is there like a strategy to it, or...? Um, kind of, sort of. Like, basically in order to unlock a Here's special move in the first place, you have to actually spell out special, but, um... Oh, actually, hold on a second. Well, you'll be a happy reporter. A little gimmick that was also in the original game coming up. Mm -hmm. Though I think this cutscene is exclu only exclusive to the uh, next quote unquote next gen versions. Oh, it is. They just put it there just to, to justify why it's there. Well, well, now all. Of oh, nice. He's used the little element as well. And, uh. Whoa! Oh, hello! A bear claw? Disney fied master hand? I just realized Murloc is a bear, isn't he? Oh yeah, he uh, is a bear. Yeah, I think he's supposed to be. If not a bear, then whatever the heck Goofy's supposed to be. A dog? Mm. I thought Goofy was a dog. Yeah, but, Goofy's yeah, a dog. But yeah, James, yeah, what was with that ghostly bear claw? He's about to chase us. Uh-oh. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Here basically, are. here's... Yeah, because basically, here's the thing. In, oh. I want to say all versions. Oh, in no. all versions of Going Quackers, you're going to have these chasing levels, which are kind of... Gyro! <laughs> Gyro, your timing couldn't have been worse. I'll write the outfit. <laughs> Meanwhile, I just hear in the background, blah, blah, just getting smacked. It's like, well, Donald, you got all the gold threats. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like you won't be enjoying it now. But anyway, like I was saying, dude, in I think all versions of this game, you'll have these levels where it's basically becomes like the chase levels from the Crash Bandicoot series. In this game, in this version, it's like a giant hand that Merlon you know, reanimated to chase you. I do know in the 64 version, this actually changes depending on the area you're in. Like, for example, in Tucky Mountain, it's actually a giant bear chasing you. Oh, that's why it's called Bear's Pass. The only thing that's kind of dumb and dumb and... Oh, God. Oh, we got hurt. So now we're introduced to our Donald's health system. His attitude problem. <laughs> exactly. So we drink a milkshake or something, I think? Yep, we... So... As if we get hit, we turn to angry Donald, and in order to heal yourself, well... Oh! oh I, I love this. It's tussling effect. around. And I love yeah. the audio effect more so. Like, uh, it, it just yeah. becomes a very demonic dunk going on, going quackers. And yeah. there we go. I, okay. Yeah. I do want to say real quick, um, when Donald's doing that little bit of, like, cloud fighting, you know, the... Wah, 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 um, I know this is for a fact in the N64 version. I don't know if all versions carry this over. You are, like, temporarily invincible when you're in the middle of that animation. Oh, yes, that does still apply here. Oh, so, okay, so that's, that's, the, that's like the equivalent of, like, you know how, like, in Mario or Sonic, when you take damage, you, you're a little transparent and your sprite flickers around on screen, and you're... I, I guess that's, for, like, their... For Donald, he's literally, he literally just goes into a frenzy. <laughs> I mean, again, it's easily one of my favorite visuals of getting hurt in a video game. Well, I love that. Yeah. While I love that, even when he's on the move, they do that thing of like him, you know, tuss like tussling his hands up and down, like like oh yeah, yeah you want to go. Yeah. Which and also one one other thing because I don't think we brought it up. Like once you hit, once Donald's hit ah, once, nuts. and oh, after, I, that's adorable. It's like once Donald's hit once and he's angry, Donald. He's now suddenly a one hit kill. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the old. Uh, Crap, I want to say, I want, I want to describe it. Yeah, it's a two hit system, I guess. Crash Bandicoot, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, essentially. Kind of. Crash yeah. Bandicoot if you had, had, not, had a mask. At all times, right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm noticing that they're giving us lives left and right here. How hard would you say this game is, James? Oh, not hard at all. Oh, and there's the nephews. Yeah. Oh, now I can do the joke. At this point, please place your thumb over the upper left corner and please tell me which triplet is saying anything at any point in time. Let's listen. <laughs> I want to say that's a green one. Was it correct? It was the it was the green one, but uh. oh, Jordy, your thumb was thumb was just small enough so you could barely see the I, colors. No, I mean, yeah, I, I closed one eye while I was covering so I wouldn't see, and I, I it was just so, a random guess. <laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our first boss. Oh, there's I knew it. Already. It's Gladstone. We have to kill him. Uh, no. Well, <laughs> no, he's not. He just got here first. 
Yeah, that's true. Ah. I wonder how he got here in the first place. <laughs> the teleporter? Well, he used the teleporter, remember? Yeah. Oh, that is actually head something. Head Ooh, that's something I... I don't know if that's just the angry wave. <laughs> uh, Gladstone? Gladstone? I'm going to look Gladstone? up. And run. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Goody. Uh, what? Dude, what is this? He's a birdie. Uh, don't you mean close? she's a birdie? She's. I'm a bird. A, he's a bird. She's a bird. We're all birds, son. <laughs> I think it was Bernadette the chicken. I think. Yeah, I think that's who that it was. Might... Bernadette. What was he from? I think she's supposed. To, I think she's, she's supposed a... to be a character from the Carl, Carl Banks comics, but I barely ever yeah. see her. So it's like. I think it's okay. a Carl Banks thing. Of course, okay. and just <laughs> you forgot, look at this. Look at this ugly mother. Or excuse me, this her ugly mother bitch. clucker. Thank mother you. Mother clucker. Thank you. <laughs> that works. Ah, that's what I'm here for. Sorry, man. Okay. I do the puns for now. Oh, jeez. Oh, the little gift? squeak noises. Yep. Oh! Oh! Ah, that's what. He was saving it for a health refill later. Oh, that. Oh, that's what the gift. Oh, that sound. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Again, I love that, infer that infernal quacking from hell. That, that sounds like my impression of Donald. <laughs> <laughs> Which you love doing. Oh, no. I go. <laughs> I don't know, that's my best right now. Oh, jeez. Wow. So, so, judging from the left, it's the yeah. traditional Nintendo oh, rule of three times. Oh, dang it. Dang it! I hate when I, and I hate whenever you get hit, the, the boss cycle resets. I hate yeah. that. It should. Uh, that, that, I hate when they do that and we punch. I'm um, sorry, but, I just. I want to say real quick, I love like his running animation when he's walking. It's like. <laughs> ah, Alright, you want to hustle? Let's go. But yeah, it's, it's like it's like he's doing the th you know the thing where like he hops up and down and like shakes his fist around. It's like they're doing that, but it, he's moving now. Yeah, he's idle too. Yeah. But I just love it like that. Like he's just complaining all throughout the boss fight. And then she said, "What, what was that song they did? They did in the Mickey shorts <laughs> between him and Daisy." Oh, that's right. Uh, the, the, when they were trying, when Mickey and Minnie were trying to get them to have a good date. <laughs> that was a fun. Oh yeah. It's like complain, yak, yak, whatever it was. Bigger, bigger. It's like. It's it's like whack whack bicker bicker whack whack bicker bicker. I love that short. <laughs> yeah. All right, come on. But it had the, it had the most confusing is ending. Stop killing your children. Thank you. Do well. It's like we're trying to defend ourselves or something. This bitch started it. Yeah. Almost. And she's about to get what's coming to her. Bam. It didn't even look like he hit her. Yeah. Sorry, Tress. You gotta go now. Oh, that was Tress? I can hear it, kind if, of. If and not bam. Tress, then Frank, because spoiler alert, Frank does voice another character coming up. Yay oh, for Gamma Rays. <laughs> Yay! So now the tele the tubal teleport has gained more power, and now we've unlocked our next location to find Daisy. You want to know where that location is? You shall find out. Well, you know what? I'm just going to say it right now, because it's funny. Duckburg. Well, I was about to say. Well, no, no, they're going to about to say in the next cutscene because too. we technically spoiled it earlier. That is, yeah, oh, that is right. true. Mm -hmm. I was say, I was say, also this cutscene we're about to see Gyro take it away. Yay! You're welcome, by the way. What's there? Aren't we like literally next door to Duckburg? Where's, where is your home and lab even at, anyway? Yes, yes, Donald, that may be, but this one saves a lot more money on gas mileage. <laughs> I'm eco-friendly. Considering all the weird contraptions that Gyro makes on a daily basis, uh, sure. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, see you all for Duckburg. Woo! Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. I'm a pilot.